Okay, here we go. We're gonna let the doors get open. Good morning, everyone. I'll give it a, a moment as our, our virtual doors open to the world on this quite uh, gloomy day in West Lafayette. I'm gonna believe that all the rain is gonna bring us flowers. <laughs> Although I think it might come with some snow. Oh, it always, it always makes me excited to see our doors open. Uh, we'll just, we'll give it a moment here and we'll go ahead and get started. We have our uh, final guest today for this series. All right. Well, good morning, everyone. My name is Candace Swick. If I haven't met you, I'm the sales and marketing director here at Westminster Village. And uh, today is our final uh, chat in this series that we're doing on uh, hosting the moving experts in, in the field of moving, all things moving uh, here in our area. And uh, so we've been really fortunate to have on Meg Howlett and her team, her husband um, from Shook Realty. And then we had uh, Danielle uh, from SOS on. And then last week we had James Hunt post with Hunt and Gather. And today we have Patrick um, Marley from Schoolhouse Auctions. And uh, he was uh, with us last year. And thank you again for joining us this year, Patrick. We really appreciate it. You're welcome. So we've learned a lot and uh, we're excited to learn some more. Uh, Patrick will be sharing with us, you know, kind of the rundown of what an auction is, how it works, and then we'll open the floor for questions. So uh, if you have questions, you can be sure to get those in the chat box and we'll allow you to do that. This is the last week on this series. So next week we'll do the drawing for this series and it's a $50 gift card to, um, I'm going to say this wrong. All of a sudden, my mind went blank <laughs> to Wright's Floral Shop. Sorry about that. Um, anyways, so let's go ahead and jump right into it. So I want to make sure we leave time for questions and, and respect your time as well. So Patrick, can you tell us about yourself? Uh, how did you find yourself to be an auctioneer? And, and tell us about Schoolhouse Auctions and um, all, of, all of that you do at your company. Well, okay. I, I guess it all started back when I was a, a, a kid, my mom was a, a certified doll doctor and she would repair dolls from all over the country. And that was back before the internet and all the travel. So it was really unique to get dolls in the mail and she would repair them and send them back. And uh, <clears throat> I bought a doll at a, at a yard sale for a dollar. My mom repaired it and we sold it for ten dollars and and I was hooked. So that that kind of started my venture into the in, in, into the antique and collectible business. Um, as I got older and was looking for something to do, I would go to auctions and would buy and sell a little bit here and there. And and I decided that that might be a, a fun venture. So here I am. <laughs> I've wow. I've been an auctioneer now for twenty six years. Uh, we've. We did live auctions almost exclusively uh, until a couple of years ago. And then due to COVID, we, we've switched over to 100% online auctions, um, which has kind of increased our, our, our field of, of sales ability. We went from having two to 300 people at our live auctions. We averaged 15,000 on our online auctions every week. So um, my goodness. We've increased our business by 40% in the last two years, and it, it is continuing to grow. Um, our market base is, is growing substantially. Uh, and then I, 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 can't, I can't say enough about the internet marketing. With, with, with good items, they tend to get out there, and, and we tend to get uh, pretty good money for those things. So. That's about the size of it. I bought an old school up in Yeoman, Indiana, and I've converted it into a home. I have a home. I have uh, five apartments that I rent out in it, and then we also have our auction facility. We have eight acres of storage, and um, it's quite the little little venture now. So it started out as a dump, but it's not that way any longer. So, so that's where Schoolhouse Auctions, the, the name comes from. It's an actual old schoolhouse. It is an actual school. It was built in 1916. In the 1950s, they added the gymnasium and a wing onto it. Uh, the gymnasium is where we held our live auctions. That's where we still set up for our online auctions. Um, Very and, interesting. 
in the wing, we have, of course, the apartments. Uh, and my, myself and my daughter each have uh, apartments here. We, we both run the company together. She's worked for me now for 12 years or so. And <clears throat> when my time comes to step away, I intend to leave it to her. So that Well, that was going to be my next question. Who runs the company with you? Is this a loan venture or a family business? It's it's a family business. There are two of us, uh, myself, and I, I guess I'm still in charge. Uh, but but I defer to her a lot. Uh, you know, she she has a lot of knowledge, a, a lot of skills with with jewelry and some of the things that that you know the ladies tend to like. She she's learned a lot and, and can deal with those kind of things. And, and then we just kind of run it together. And like I say, when I when I do leave, whether it's this earth or this business, uh, she'll continue to have it and run it and hopefully it'll last for hundreds of years. I don't know. So can you tell us, Patrick, how how does it work with a client? Can you take us from the point of someone reaching out to you to and who might reach out to you to that finish point of, of being completed? Okay, well, we, we have the ability to help anybody in any situation. Um, we can sell from one item for someone to to, to whole households and complete businesses. Um, so we, we try to, we try to cater to our, our clients needs. Everybody has a little bit different need. If you need us to come and, and pick up just a few items cause you're moving or, or, or downsizing and you have only a few, we're, we're capable of doing that quite easily. If you need someone to come and help you evaluate and, and, and do a whole estate and an entire household, uh, we're capable of doing that. Once we've made the choice as to what you need, it, it really works the same, um, whether you have one item or a complete household, <clears throat> we'll either pick it up and bring it to our facility. We sell everything online, so you have the ability to actually track your, your items. You can, you can go right on to our sales uh, and, and watch your item sale. Um, once we've sold the item, you'll get a printout along with a check. Uh, within about a week of, of what everything sold for and how much you got. A, a lot of people like the ability to watch it online. It, it can be scary, but it can also be fun. Um, we, we, the online auctions work similar to a live auction as in we get bids in the first few minutes and then, and then it kind of sets dormant until the till towards the end. And then, then it can get really exciting. We've sat and watched auctions gain thousands and thousands of dollars just in the last hour. Um, so it, it can be fun if you if you're of a mind to <laughs> open minded enough to watch it. Some people don't like to watch it because they don't want to see their memories sold, but uh, it it is a pretty fun way to go. So how long does an online auction auction last? We run our auctions, our, our regular weekly auctions. We get them loaded up Friday night and they close out on Monday nights. Okay. If, we, if we do an on-site, which we have the ability to come to, to your place, if, if, if we can, we can come to your house or your business <clears throat> and do everything from there. Those will run usually a day or two longer because we'll get them up early before Friday. And then we would run, usually they run from Thursday to Tuesday. Um, but but it still works the same. Once the sale closes out, we'll have a pickup day. Like Tuesdays are our pickup days here in Yeoman. So we'll have 200 people coming on average to pick their items up. Uh, we do a lot of shipping. We'll ship out 30 to 40 packages every week. Uh, we literally send stuff all over the world. And we get some of the weirdest things. We, last night, we had a Beavis and Butthead statue or, or a little uh, figure from from the 90s if you all remember beavis and butthead sold for 85 dollars, and we're going to ship it out now who'd have thought that that's interesting yes yeah. that is interesting how do you market your sales your auctions <clears throat> we do a, a lot of internet marketing um of course we're we're signed up with go to auctions uh go to auctions.com which is a good one we have our own facebook page we have our own website that we do a, a buku marketing through that and then of course some of the standard traditional ways we'll we'll run newspaper and yellowbook.com and and some of those kind of things that that we have um we're picking up new customers pretty well weekly uh, and we hear from people 
all over. We sold a, a China set last night. I had a lady from Texas call me and she bought that set of China. Now there's 90 some pieces in there that we'll have to package and get ready to ship to Texas, but that's all right. Um, <laughs> we don't mind. So how does that work? So say I bring, you know, one of our residents who are moving in, they bring China to you. Might Do people bring just maybe some things and not all their things to you? Or do they typically bring all of it? And then once it sells, if you're shipping, do you handle the shipping and the shipping costs? Does that come out of your fees? Okay. Yes. We take care of everything. Once we've received, whether it's one item or a, or a hundred, um, once we've received those items, it's it's all our our baby. We'll take care of everything for it. We'll take care of all the shipping, all the marketing, everything. It's it's a one stop shop, so you have nothing to worry about. And and yes, people do bring us from one item to complete households. Uh, we just did a home. The whole family was from Maine. They literally sent us the keys. We went over and opened up the home cleaned everything out, uh, cars included, uh, and emptied the house, broom swept it, and got it ready for sale. So we took care of the whole process for them. Uh, we've got an on, on site coming up in uh, Monticello that's the same way. Um, it, it's a kind of a, a family that's spread out all over the country and they can't be here. We've met with them. We'll go up into that home. We're going to literally do the clean out after the sale. We all have stuff that doesn't sell and needs to be disposed of and distributed accordingly. So we'll go up, do the sale, and then we'll do the clean out afterwards and turn it over to the realtors. So can you talk to us about what are the fees to have, you know, if there's an auction, if I wanted to do that, um, what would be the fees? How does that work? Well, we, we try to keep it simple. We have a flat commission for household stuff. If you bring your household things to us, we charge 25% of whatever it sells for. If we come and pack it up and haul it away, which we don't mind doing, we charge 35%. We charge a standard 10% on any titled vehicles. And we, since we own the business and, and are, are capable, if someone brings us a lot of value, we're a little negotiable. We're, we're not, those fees aren't set in stone. Um, when you're dealing with furniture, it's, it, you know, there's not a lot of money, but a, a, a lot of times people will have gold and silver. We do really well with, with high-end collectibles, artwork. We're, we can be negotiable, um, you know, if, if the stuff is there and, and, and the money is there. That's interesting. So how do you go about knowing how to, how to price something? Do you have appraisers come in or, or do you guys appraise? How do you figure that out? Well, I, I am an appraiser. Um, <clears throat> most of the time you don't need an appraisal. I, I, I can tell you that most of us, most of us have the same merchandise in our homes. We all shop in the same stores. We have the same stuff. I, I, I pretty much have seen everything. Now, with that said, I do run across things that I've, I've never seen. Um, in, in this modern world, we, we all have computers right in our palm of our hand. It, it's, it's so easy to figure out what you have that even I can do it. So, I, I, and, and we, we, we love to have customers that are informed. Most of us tend to know if we have something that's valuable and hard to get, we, we tend to know. And if we don't, we're, we're gonna tell you. Um, as far as the marketing end, all of our auctions, we start everything at, at $5. Uh, we've sold, we sold a house in Lafayette last year that started at $5. I've sold $30,000 automobiles. Uh, we've sold guns, paintings. Uh, we just had some rough piece of art that brought a couple hundred dollars last night. It started at $5. In the last 10 years, we found two Bob Ross paintings oh. uh, in households, one in Monticello, one in Reynolds, Indiana. Those sold for 10, about 10,000 a piece and, and they were $5 starts just like everything, so. Why the five dollar start? That's something I didn't know. Well, we we contend that if it's going to sell for less than five dollars, we probably are going to lose money if we're messing with it. So, right. uh, five dollars tends to be a good starting point. Uh, it's not too much if you have a crock pot. You know, somebody's probably willing to pay five dollars to start your crock pot off and, and 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 maybe buy that. 
And I personally feel that if you started at a low price and, and we see it every week, we will get more people involved. Um, if somebody bids in, well, they say, hmm, I think that sounds like a bargain and they'll get involved in that bidding and then somebody else will. And, and once you've bid on an item, in your mind, you really own it, even even though you've not bought it yet, and and you're you're going to bid against it to, to to continue to own it, and, and you want to own it at the end. So, um, how does that work? I, I that sounds. I agree with you. I think that yeah, I can see where that would work that way. But what about when you do have an item that you know is valued up here? Mm -hmm. What? How does that work with that? Do you ever run into issues with that or no? Not really. The the items that are high value are, are always gonna sell high. It's the days of buying million dollar things at, at a country auction for $10. I, I think those days are over. Uh, Did that, they, that ever happen? Oh my, I missed out. I, I've never seen it. I've gone to auctions my entire life and, and never made a purchase like that. Um, but but the, generally the things are gonna have value. I, I collect old trucks. I, I'm an old truck person. I I just recently bought an old truck from Montana and, you know, out in the middle of nowhere, it was an online auction and, and I won the bid and I paid fair market value for the truck. And then I had to pay a thousand dollars to get it brought out here. So um, I, I think any more of those kind of things, things hold value. And, and we sold $1.2 million worth of stuff online auction last year and that was all household things so i and i expect fully expect to do two million this year we're we're even building another building uh just to accommodate and possibly put up extra auctions fascinating very good well i will allow um any if you have questions now would be the time to put them in the chat box and while we're giving folks a moment to if we if they have any questions we'll go ahead and go over to trisha to get some updates for her. I will remind you, um, I will send out a recording of this and I'll also send out Patrick's information so that uh, we can be sure to get that to you if you wanna reach out to him. So Tricia, what do you have for us today? Have I heard Westminster is open up to visitors. The pub is open to visitors on weekends as well. A little birdie told us that they will likely be opening soon for lunch daily. They also have a new menu and you can check it out on our website under dining. Um, we are planning an event next month on March 30th to share the eight dimensions of wellness and how they can be applied to your life um, and wellness. Stay tuned for details. And as always, if you like Westminster Village, leave us a review on Facebook or Google. Thank you. I'm really looking forward to that event. Um, so we follow the eight dimensions of wellness here at Westminster Village. It's kind of a guide to where we fit in any um, ac activities, wellness checks, uh, the Live Well Center, all of that, dining, all of those things kind of fall under those eight dimensions of wellness. So we thought we would do an event to highlight that and educate people about what those dimensions are and how to how they can be utilized in different aspects of your life. So that'll be a neat event. It'll be very participatory. So um, it, it'll be where you're actually participating in different things. So uh, be, I'm excited to share with that. In fact, our next uh, village chat series leading up to that, we're gonna be highlighting that. So we have a, a health and wellness navigator here at Westminster Village, Jill Hunt. She will be our guest next week to kick that off and give us some education about the eight dimensions of wellness and to just kind of give us that overview. And then we'll be going into um, having guests on to teach on different parts of it uh, leading up to that event. So that'll be fun. Um, and then of course, next week we'll do the drawing for the Wrights Floral Shop. But uh, that is, did anybody have, oh, we have some questions. All right. Here we go. Um, okay, Patrick. Yes. Let's start with, okay, so Lucy wants to know what is the contact number and information for your online auction. Um, I can send that out via email to everyone who's in this group so we can take care of that piece. Um, and then I have another question. 
do antiques have any value now? Um, and there, are there any in particular that have more value than others? Okay, yes, the, the an, antique market has taken some hits, uh, especially after the market crash of 08. Um, people kind of got away from some of the things. We've seen some trends upward with the, the furniture. Furniture end is coming back. Um, we, we have tremendous luck with some of the China, uh, China market is down, but we, we tend to do really well, especially with the online on the China market. Uh, not, not saying it's gonna be what it was 20 years ago, but a lot of things are starting to trend upwards a little bit. Uh, it's still a little harder to sell some of the large furniture pieces. The kids today are decorating with smaller stuff. If it came from Pier 1 and Ikea, they tend to love it. I, I, I can't understand that, but that's how it is. So. But we, we do and can evaluate anything for people, and we offer that as a free service. We would be more than happy to meet with somebody. Uh, people send us pictures or, or questions all the time, and, and we're more than happy to discuss things with folks at any time. Well, that's good to know. All right, next question. <clears throat> Excuse me. How do you vet how this is someone who wants to know how to go about vetting an auctioneer if they don't live in our area and can't have you? Well, they're going to want to, to check with their local auctioneers association. Every state has an auctioneers association. That, that's the first place to go to. Um, check with them. They'll have a list of, of, of quality auctioneers, people that have been around the business and understand it and know it. That, that's my first and foremost recommendation. And also, if they have a local auctioneer, give them a call. They may know somebody. We all refer each other. And in this modern, you know, inter interweb based age, uh, we have a lot of contacts. Most of us know people in other states and can recommend people. So. Very good. Well, thank you, Patrick. I really appreciate um, your time with us today. Oh, wait, got another one. Got another one. All right. This is someone who says they have a truckload of stuff. Truck 27, not old, Mazda built by Ford. Can he bring to you? And what is the process of that? The, give us a call, uh, set a time and a date. We're pretty flexible. Um, as I said before, my daughter and I both live here on site. So we're pretty flexible as far as receiving goods and items. The only day that we don't like to take things is Tuesday because that's our pickup day. Um, however, if you're bringing us a vehicle, you will need a clear title um, and then just show up with things. We have a consignment contract that we'll fill out. We'll take care of everything for you. We'll unload it. We'll give you a big old smile and send you on your way. Very good. Well, like I said, I'll be sure to include all of the contact information for Patrick and his team in the email with the recording later on today. Um, if there's no other questions, I think that's all we have for the day. Um, thank you so much, Patrick. We appreciate your time. Okay, thank you for having me. You're welcome. We'll see you later. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.